Hi there, welcome to Premium Builds, I'm John. In this video we're going to take a look at some B550 motherboards. B550 chipset motherboards are still a great option. They're perfect for gaming and general use builds and they'll happily support all the new Ryzen 5000 CPUs. We've also got a slight update to their CPUs due in early 2022 with stacked vCache and that should actually bring quite a big uplift in gaming performance we hope. So these boards will stay relevant for a while yet. To make our recommendations for these videos, we've taken a look at some boards ourselves, we've tested them for performance and features, and ease of use as well, both building and using in day-to-day. -day. We've also read around for user reviews, other reviews, things like VRM testing and feature reviews, and of course just the general specification and information available online. Taking all of this together, we've come up with a series of tips for you to look out for when you're choosing a B550 motherboard for your own build. We're also going through the options at each level in the market, to recommend to you what we feel are the best options in terms of value, performance, and features. So sit tight, we'll run you through the pointers that you need to look for for a motherboard when you're trying to choose, and then give you our recommendations as well. First of all, let's take a look at some tips as to what you're going to want to look out for as you look and make your own decision on motherboards. First of all, we'd advise that you avoid the bargain basement. There are B550 motherboards available under $100, but almost without exception, there are some fairly major compromises on those boards and we wouldn't recommend them. There's things like missing VRM heat sinks, low quality VRMs that may struggle to run a higher performance CPU to its full potential, and also just quality of life features that are really missing. Things like the sufficient fan headers, um, USB connection headers, and uh, lack of slots like only one M.2 slot. And these are the things that whilst you may be able to get a PC up and running, it may be frustrating during the build process, and as you come to upgrade the PC later in its life, you may find that the motherboard is a compromise that you didn't realize you were making at the time. Therefore, those very uh, lower end boards we'd recommend you avoid because for just 15 or $20 more, you buy a substantially better product with some of the entry level boards that we can recommend to you. First of all, just check VRM quality. It's not critically important with AMD CPUs because they're not particularly power hungry, but you do just want some adequate heat sinking and a reasonably competent VRM on all the boards we'll recommend you and all the boards we've really seen above about $100, that's not an issue and it's not something you need to dig into too deeply unless you're specifically looking to run a Ryzen 9 CPU or to overclock heavily on these motherboards. Also look for at least two M2 slots. Basically all motherboards have these apart from the real low end options and it's something just to look out for because if you are looking at something with one M2 slot, it may compromise your ability to upgrade in future. We'd also recommend you choose a board with four RAM slots. Again, this is just something that may come into be useful later on down the line as you upgrade the PC. Obviously, ITX boards do have two RAM slots. Some specialist overclocking boards have two RAM slots. And uh, that's a compromise that if you make, you'll make it knowing the uh, compromise to the build overall. However, some of the very low end MATX boards do just have two RAM slots. And again, it's a signature of a low quality board that we'd avoid. One of the main areas where features do vary on B550 motherboards is in the USB connectivity. First of all, there's the USB 3.2 Gen 2 header. Not all motherboards have this. It's an internal header that connects to the front panel on your case. If you choose a motherboard without this header and a case that does have those uh, sockets that connect via it, then you'll have dead sockets on the front of your case, which can be very frustrating. So make sure that the motherboard you get and the case you get are compatible in that way. Secondly, take a look at the rear I.O. panel. Some motherboards do have quite restricted USB connectivity in particular, and it's something you'll want to look out for, just in case you do need more than, say, five uh, USB ports at the rear of the case. You can make up for this with the 3.2 Gen 2 header or other USB headers on the front panel of the case, but generally speaking, your permanent USB connections on the rear, take a look and make sure they're sufficient for your needs and any future requirements you think you might have. Finally, it's worth considering Wi-Fi. There's a number of boards that are available with Wi-Fi and some boards that have options with and without Wi-Fi. They're often called things like AX or AC in the name. So just check the specification. If you know or think that you want Wi-Fi in the future, then it's worth just getting a board with it inbuilt now. It's a useful feature to have anyway. It'll perform the same whether it's inbuilt or as an add-in PCIe card. It just tends to save you a little bit of money getting it built into the board and it makes the build process cleaner and easier. So with that said, let's move on to the motherboards that we're going to recommend to you. We'll start off with the entry level. Our first recommendation is for the MSI Pro VDH Wi-Fi, which retails at the moment at around $105. It's a board we've tested ourselves, and it's a good value and full featured motherboard. It's got understated looks with an RGB switch, so you can switch RGB features on or off if you want a more professional look. There's no actual RGB LEDs on the board itself though. It's got inbuilt Wi-Fi, there's a simple BIOS flashback button which is easy to use and quick to perform, so even if it comes with an incompatible BIOS, you can flash a compatible one easily yourself. It has the internal USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 header and six USB rear outputs. 
There are five fan headers in total, three system, one CPU fan, and one AIO pump header. The cons of the MSI Pro VDH Wi-Fi are that it only has one full-length PCIe slot for a GPU, and no 4X slots, which could restrict the use of cards like capture cards. It's got a fairly basic audio chip with the ALC892 audio codec and three rear audio outputs. There's no rear USB-C, so make sure your case has USB-C if you require it to make use of the internal header. And it's M80X, so it might not look great in an ATX case. However, overall, it's a great board with few compromises and it'll form the basis of a fantastic entry-level gaming PC or general all-round PC. Another entry-level option is the Gigabyte B550M DS3H AC. This is another micro ATX motherboard. We'd always recommend the MSI Pro VDH over this board if it is available, because that board is more fully featured. However, the Gigabyte is a decent stand-in option. It's got an acceptable VRM, relatively basic looks, but it does have a decent I.O. panel on the rear, and a quick flash feature so that you can update BIOS yourself. There's both Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi versions available. Overall, this is an acceptable budget option to the MSI Pro VDH Wi-Fi if that's inflated in price or not available where you are. Moving into the mid-range then, let's take a look at some other M80X motherboards that have a slightly wider feature set. First up, there's the Gigabyte B550M Aorus Pro P Rev1. This retails at around $130. It's got strong VRM with good heat sinking, and it's got great connectivity at the rear with 9 USB ports and USB-C. There's a good audio chip on board, the ALC1200, which is a cut above what you'd expect at this price point. It has the Q-Flash feature to enable you to flash the BIOS yourself, and I think it's a decent looking board as well. Do just be careful with the Gigabyte Aorus lineup. There's a lot of very similarly named boards. They're all called things like the Aorus Pro, the Aorus Elite, and they actually span quite a range of quality of boards. So look carefully at the exact features you're getting and don't just substitute in an Aorus Elite for an Aorus Pro thinking it's much the same thing but cheaper. There are some quite substantial differences, so do take a look. However, this board we're happy to recommend and we think it's a great uh, option at the price it is at the moment. Also in the mid-range, there's also the ASRock B550M Steel Legend. Our one misgiving with ASRock boards is that none of them appear to have uh, an easy BIOS flash solution. So if you do purchase this board, make sure you've got a means to update BIOS, either with a compatible older CPU, a shop that can perform that for you, or that if you do order it, you know that it comes with a Ryzen 5000 ready BIOS. Besides that though, this is a board with a strong VRM, good looks, it has nice looks. This is a silver highlighted board, which fits nicely with silver or white themed builds. It has two M.2 slots for storage and an additional M.2 E key slot, which is specifically for adding a Wi-Fi card. It's quite a nice compact solution that doesn't take up a PCIe slot if you do need Wi-Fi in the future. Overall then, this is a good strong board. Just make sure that BIOS is compatible before you purchase it, or you know that you've got a method that you can update the BIOS if you need to. At $140, it makes a good purchase. Moving up into the mid-range, we've got another M80X board, which is the ASUS B550M Tough Gaming Plus Wi-Fi. This board retails at around $150, which represents pretty good value, and it's a board we've tested ourselves. It has a good I.O. with good connectivity at the rear. There's the ASUS Flashback BIOS button, which enables you to update the BIOS yourself, and it's got some nice RGB highlights and good looks. The VRMs are strong with heat sinking, and it's a good performing board that won't have any problems running any of the Ryzen 5000 CPUs. As long as it's around $150, this is a board that we'd pay $10 or so more over the ASRock Steel Legend in order to get the Wi-Fi and the BIOS flash functionality of this board. Also in the mid-range, there's the MSI Morta B550M Wi-Fi. It's a really strong board. It's one we've used in our test bench for around six months. We know it performs well and has good features. However, at the moment, the price appears to be inflated up towards around $170 or more dollars. And really at that price, it's not worth it. We'd take the ASUS tough over that. Nevertheless, it's a full featured board with good layout, good connectivity, and it does nothing wrong really. It's certainly a board we can recommend provided it's around $150. Moving up to ATX boards, these boards are full size, but not necessarily any more featured than the MATX boards. They just add a few PCIe slots. In terms of value, it's really just a case of whether you want to pay a little bit more for a full-sized ATX board that will fill an ATX case and perhaps look a little bit more like it belongs. That said, there's not a great deal more functionality you're buying, just a few additional PCIe slots, which generally aren't that much of an issue. If you buy a good M80X board, it will have all the features and performance of any of the ATX boards in this review. Nevertheless, there are some really good ATX options. First up, we'd recommend the MSI Tomahawk B550. This is a strong all-round offering. It's got good VRMs with heat sinking, 
There's an internal USB 3.2 Gen 2 header. One of its slight compromises is that it only has five rear USB-A ports with one USB-C port. However, there are loads of internal system fan headers for complex fan or cooling arrangements. There's also an inbuilt I.O. shield. It also has MSI's BIOS update feature so that you can update the BIOS yourself. Overall, this is a strong all-round offering. We have no hesitation at recommending it at about $150. There's nothing really that you'd need more from a motherboard unless you want Wi-Fi integrated. We can also recommend the Asus Tough B550 Plus Wi-Fi. This is about a $160 board but has Wi-Fi in built. Other than that, it's just a full-size version of the MATX TUF motherboard that we've tested ourselves and found very easy to get on with. It's got six SATA ports, there's an additional PCIe slot, and there's both Wi-Fi and non-Wi-Fi versions available. Again, it's got good aesthetics and nice RGB highlights, and it has Asus's BIOS flashback feature so that you can update the BIOS yourself. All around, this is a really good board. You'll have no problems at all with it. If you want an ATX board with Wi-Fi or the choice of board without Wi-Fi, it'll do you proud. Moving up into the higher end, there's a few B550 boards which have caught our eye. However, it is worth considering that once you're past $200, you do start to move into X570 motherboard territory, and it may be that the additional features that those boards provide, just with additional PCIe 4.0 connectivity on M2 slots, and perhaps a little bit more versatility in terms of input and output if you're planning a more complex build or a build for a sort of workstation, those are boards you could consider at this price point. Nonetheless, some of the B550 motherboards still have a really attractive offering. First up, there's the Asus ROG Strix B550F. This is a motherboard that retails between $180 and $200 at the moment, and that represents relatively good value for money, provided you accept you are paying a little bit of ROG Strix tax just for the aesthetic and branding of this motherboard. It's got good VRMs, it looks good, and it's got a high quality audio chip on board as well. The main misgiving with this board is that there's no internal USB 3.2 Gen 2 header, so make sure that it's compatible with any case you buy, and you're not going to leave any front ports dead. There are also similar B550E and XE offerings. These are both focused on overclocking features, but they're really not necessary to get the best out of a Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 CPU. With both of them approaching or exceeding $300, you really are paying a heavy premium for overclocking features that aren't that necessary. And unless you're specifically focused on overclocking, I wouldn't recommend them as purchases over the B550F. Other boards that focus on overclocking features are the MSI MEG, Unify, and Unify X. Both of these motherboards retail at around $280. They have four M.2 slots. There are only two memory slots on the Unify X, and this is for the clearest signal pathway to enable RAM overclocking. And they make great claims about the RAM overclocking performance of this motherboard on their website. However, for most users, it's not a necessary feature, and you'd be better off going for the four-slot Meg Unify in order to expand your RAM compatibility in the future. There's a VRM heat pipe to effectively spread uh, heat through the VRM components and draw heat away. And they have two 8-pin CPU power sockets. This isn't actually necessary for any of the Ryzen CPUs you'd put on this motherboard, but it's an aesthetic feature and something you might want to consider in terms of the PSU you use, whether you can fully populate those slots uh, or whether it bothers you if you have to leave one of them open. It will run with just one 8-pin slot occupied. However, they're both good-looking boards with a nice range of features, and if you are looking at the higher end of B550 motherboards, they're worth your consideration. Finally, there's the Gigabyte Aorus Master at $260. This board has exceptionally strong VRM and heat syncing. There's three M.2 slots, Wi-Fi 6, and it's got a high-quality audio codec on board as well. The rear panel is particularly impressive with epic USB connectivity. It has 11 USB sockets and USB-C. It's a great-looking board, and at the higher end of B550 motherboards, it's one we'd strongly consider. Moving on then to Mini ITX, on B550 there's actually only six boards to choose between and it's really a matter of considering which features you're going you're gonna to prioritise and which you don't need to get the best option for you. There's only one budget option which is the ASRock B550M ITX AC. It's around $130. It has no internal 3.2 Gen 2 header and relatively basic feature set and looks. However, it's a fully functional board, it'll run the Ryzen 5600X and 5800X absolutely fine, and if you are trying to keep costs down on your Mini ITX build, it's the only option available to you. The rest of the motherboards retail at around $200 to $210. ASRock have the more expensive Phantom Gaming, which has an internal 3.2 Gen 2 header, but no BIOS flashback, and again, like all ASRock boards, we just caution that you have some plan to update BIOS in case it's not compatible with the CPU you're wanting to use. The Asus B550i has a bit of a cursed rear I.O. layout. It's only got four USB Type-A on the rear there um, with a USB-C, 
but it does have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 header. So if you do need those high speed USB ports, we'd suggest that you try and find an ITX case that has that feature built in. The MSI has a chipset fan, which may fire up when the board's working hard, the chipset's working hard and cause undue noise, but it does have an internal USB 3.2 Gen 2 header and decent rear IO. The Gigabyte Aorus MITX offering has no internal USB 3.2 Gen 2 header, but otherwise does have BIOS flashback, decent rear IO, and a good all round specification. Overall then for B550 MITX, we'd just recommend that you really do carefully consider what connectivity the case you're choosing has, and that the rear IO is suitable for your needs. Those are really the features you're gonna focus in on in order to choose the best board for you because they all cost roughly the same and they just make slightly different compromises in terms of their connectivity. Do be wary of those ASRock boards. Make sure that they're coming with the correct BIOS for the CPU you want to use or that you've got a way to update them with an older CPU or a shop or a friend who can help you out with that so that you can get the PC up and running. Otherwise, it could be a bit of a nightmare of compatibility trying to get a viable BIOS onto those boards. I hope you found this video useful in choosing a B550 motherboard. The nice thing about B550 motherboards is that there really aren't that many bad options out there. They all perform the same at the CPUs we've tested, the Ryzen 5800X. It's really just about drilling down into those specifications with regards to the IO panel, make sure you're getting the connectivity you want, whether it has Wi-Fi or not, that it's got the correct number of M.2 slots for your needs, and of course, just be wary with BIOS flashback. Some of those ASRock boards don't have it, and it's something that we consider essential on B550 because AMD do often require you to put a new BIOS on the motherboard in order to be compatible with the latest CPUs. Please do check out premiumbuilds.com. We've got loads of information on there, loads of advice and component reviews and recommendations for you to make sure your PC is as good as it can be.